I'm not looking for the same amount of lift that I am up front, so I'm allowing for less saturation back here. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is, happy to see you. My name's Brian Hare, I'm here with FSC Live for your Wednesday color class. And today we're gonna be going over some really nice handcrafted highlights for super short hair. So the look of this is going to be brightest around the face, which is what you're going for when you're trying to get that sun lightened effect because that's the hair that sees the sun the most. All right, so one of the things that you're gonna want to be looking out for when it comes to this type of highlighting is the hair that's the longest in the haircut. Because just like when you're doing long balayage and thinking about how those ends they're older, they would have seen the sun more, so they would be lighter than everything else. This is the exact same thing, just shrunk down into something smaller. Uh, so we're gonna get quicker transitions to get that nice sunlightened effect. So I'm going with Paul Mitchell Skylights. It's great to work with. It's got great consistency, a good predictable lift, which is always important. 40 volume, because we don't mess around. Put in exactly that much developer. So here's my toothpaste consistency. All right, this time, paddle's big, because we're actually gonna use the paddle as part of the tool for doing this. So this is gonna be about timing. So this is gonna be a technique that I'm gonna teach you. You're not just gonna slap something on their head and then go have lunch you're actually gonna need to kind of hang out or keep a timer because every few minutes you're gonna go in and add more to this so that you can create a very dimensional look in just one visit. So I know that I'm going to start up by the face. So I got my paddle loaded up. I'm trying to keep my product off to one side so that I can use the other side as the tool. So again, this is gonna be just all of the balayage tricks that we've ever learned as far as application goes, just on really short hair. And then we're gonna just work back as far as you want to. Again, create that visual in your mind of how you want this light to sit when it's all done. I want it real light up around the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply all of that now, focusing again more on my ends. So again, I'm looking at this and like, okay, we're covered here on this side. Let's start bringing it across this hairline now. So don't worry about necessarily making it too blonde. Right now we're really just creating focused areas where the highlights will be the brightest because eventually we're gonna come through and have lightener on most of the top of this head, but I want these to be really focused highlights once everything has been busted up. So I'm just gonna turn my model to hit this last front piece that's coming from over on this quadrant of the haircut. Because I want this to process for a good solid few minutes on its own because this needs to be more lightened than everything else on the head. Then we've now begun highlighting this so you wanna start stepping back into the hair. Now is when I would look at this haircut or the rest of this haircut and start finding any areas of it where the hair is a little bit longer and would probably see more of the sun. So I'm seeing up here where it is, we'll be getting some sun exposure up top, but there are some areas where it's a little bit longer style wise. 
and I think it'll just look cooler to hit those first. I'm not focused on getting all the way down to the root with those highlights. This is gonna be really just hitting those ends because just like this, I want this to be lightest. I want the ends to be the lightest part throughout the rest of the haircut. When you're painting these, try to be mindful of going in with your brush parallel to the highlight and not perpendicular. Just with the tip of the brush, I'm just looking to see what I can grab because there's hair that's already in a highlight. All right, leave it alone. So I'm flicking and I see, all right, here's some hair that I can get to highlight. So I'm gonna do it. Grab it, use the end of the paddle to hold it. Uh, all right, so I've gone through now, and think of this as like level two. So I've got my level two highlights in here, if you wanna jump overhead. I didn't come all the way into the back back because this is the stuff that I'm gonna need to transition my super bright front into the untouched back. So I'm not really looking to have anything super bright back here, so I'm really going to wait and highlight this stuff last. So now you've gone and you've processed your guest in salon reality with this. Most of this would be dry, so this next step would be a little bit different. Since it's all still wet right now, it might be a little lumpy, but you'll get the idea. Uh, all right, so we're gonna load up. You've now let it sit 10 minutes of processing with 40 under whatever kind of heat source you got going on. So now we're gonna really start getting into the nitty gritty because we need to get moving because you still have other things to do. So this is starting to get nice and light. So use your paddle or tool of choice. I'm reapplying to some of these areas, going a little bit deeper with the highlights. So I'm coming into this top here and seeing, I should probably go a little deeper with this highlight. Now I am gonna go ahead and do some nice surface highlights. Not can, I'm not focused as much on my saturation back here because just like I would teach in you know, a, a long hair balayage class, you can dictate how much lift to expect by your saturation. So again, like I said in the back, I'm not looking for the same amount of lift that I am up front, so I'm allowing for less saturation back here. That's what this looks like. That's, that's the consistency you want. I'm like actually waiting the five minutes. I'm just gonna come around so you can see now we're starting to get more highlights in the back, but they're nowhere near the uh, saturation that the front demands. So after you process this, you could either be done. I like to really go in and make sure from this point that I give it one last, like what I did with my, uh, my pre-done, like, all right, it's pretty much done. You know what, let's go in and really just bust everything up to make sure that I'm getting that last little touch of dimension. And then I'm gonna start breaking it up just to push it in a new direction. Not so much for any other reason than to see if there's anywhere that has clearly been missed. Sort of just picking it through to make sure that there's no areas that have been completely ignored because that will stick out like a sore thumb. So now, this should hopefully make a little bit more sense to show you the dimension that we've created. Like, 
you've still got that base of the natural dark in there, but then you've got these areas where it's just been lightened like a little bit. Some areas where it really must have just gotten like a little bleach dust on it to have busted that base a tiny bit. And then you've got your areas where the hair is a little bit longer and I've lifted the ends to get as bright as we can.